matter. We're learning today that Trump's lawyer has receipts and that special counsel Jack Smith has them too. The Guardian reporting Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran, warned Trump about retaining classified documents, which could be significant in the criminal probe. Corcoran memorializing the warning in roughly 50 pages of notes described to The Guardian by three people with knowledge of their contents. The notes being produced to a federal grand jury after an appeals court allowed the attorney-client and work product privileges between Corcoran and Trump to be pierced because judges believed Trump might have used Corcoran's legal advice in furtherance of a crime. The Guardian also reporting prosecutors have fixated on Trump's valet, Walt Nauta. After he told the DOJ, Trump told him to move boxes out of the storage room before and after the subpoena. That does not look good for Trump. Meanwhile, Trump's legal team is thinning out. One of his top lawyers, Tim Parlatore, resigning, blaming infighting amongst Trump's lawyers and citing problems with one lawyer in particular, Boris Epstein. Epstein is particularly close to Trump, reportedly talking to the former president multiple times a day. Parlatore saying interference from Epstein made his job just too difficult. There are certain individuals that made defending the president much harder than it needed to be. Boris Epstein, who had really done everything he could to try to block us, to prevent us from doing what we could uh, to, to defend the president. He served as kind of a, um, a filter to prevent us from getting information to the client and getting information from the client. Joining us now is Hugo Glow, excuse me, and the Mar Logo documents probe is not the only entanglement keeping Trump on his toes. The New York Times reporting E. Jean Carroll, who recently won five million dollars in damages from Trump for civil suit for her civil suit for sexual abuse and defamation, is now seeking a quote very substantial additional amount in response to his insults during a CNN town hall made just one day after she won her case. Trump's attorney responding, saying Carol's, quote, 11th hour attempt shows her, quote, true motivation. Joining me now for all of this, Hugo Lowell, political investigations reporter for The Guardian, who broke the story on the notes revealing Trump was warned about retaining classified documents, and Neil Katyal, former acting U.S. Solicitor General. Hugo, Neil, glad to have you guys here tonight. Hugo, I'm going to start with you. 50 pages of notes. That's a lot of self-preservation by Evan Corcoran, right? Yeah, and it's uh, what's in the notes that really piqued the interest of federal prosecutors uh, working for the special counsel. Um, at least two points in particular, according to our reporting. Number one, that Corcoran informed Trump in no uncertain terms that he could not retain any of the classified documents that have been subpoenaed when Trump asked if they had to give everything back. And second of all, that Trump and Trump's valet, Walt Nauda, had unusually detailed knowledge of the subpoena response. They knew when Corcoran was conducting a search, where and when he was searching, and all of that you know, seems to point to involvement from uh, people at the heart of the obstruction investigation um, having unusually high levels of knowledge of what was going on uh, when uh, Corcoran was trying to complete that search. You know, Neil, Evan Corcoran warning his client, Donald Trump, that he could not retain any classified documents. I mean, doesn't this evidence make special counsel Jack Smith's case on obstruction a layup now? I think it does, Katie. So I've all, really for a long time thought this was the strongest potential criminal case against Donald Trump, and it gets stronger and stronger every day. It's always been clear and easy. And, you know, remember, we've always known that Trump had these highly sensitive documents long after he was subpoenaed. So the current investigation is not as much about did he have the documents. They know Trump kept them, but whether he knew he was doing something illegal when he kept them. Now, in an obstruction case, a target wants to play dumb. He wants to convince prosecutors, look, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. And normally, Katie, acting dumb isn't, shall we say, the highest of hurdles for Donald Trump. But in this case, his own lawyer's notes show he needed to hand the documents over and that it looks like he was manipulating them, according to Hugo's phenomenal reporting. And if true, it makes an obstruction case, as you say, pretty easy. So, Hugo, you're also reporting, quote, the notes revealed 
how Trump and his valet had unusually <coughs> detailed knowledge of the botched subpoena response, including where Corcoran intended to search and not search for classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, as well as when Corcoran was actually doing his search. So, Hugo, how much do you think Jack Smith would need Trump's valet, Walt Nauta, in building his prosecution of Trump? Look, the DOJ's theory, at least in the obstruction case, the obstruction strand of this investigation with respect to the subpoena response, has long been trying to find out whether Trump effectively arranged for boxes of classified documents to be removed from the storage room um, so that the lawyer would not find them when he was doing the search. And I think what the notes kind of show is a timeline where whether it was Nauda or someone else had the means or at least the ability to take stuff out and conceal them if they so wanted. I think, you know, the evidence needed to get to that point is, is a high threshold. I think to make an obstruction case here, you would basically have to show that Trump and or uh, Nauda knew they were removing boxes that actually contain classifieds. Um, and I think that's where the hurdle has been for the special counsel. That's certainly been what the special counsel has been asking witnesses when they've appeared before the grand jury. Um, we don't know, obviously, everything or all the evidence that the special counsel has, but that seems to be at the crux of the obstruction probe here. You know, Neil, what's really critical in this issue, as far as I'm concerned, is that piercing of attorney client and work product privileges. You and I, as lawyers, we normally would never have the conversations between clients and ourselves disclosed to a federal grand jury or federal prosecutors. And we certainly wouldn't have our work product in terms of our notes. In this instance, though, not only was it a trial court judge, but an appeals court said, you know what, there's enough evidence of crime fraud here to be able to sustain piercing those particular privileges. Considering all of that, do you think we're at the point where an indictment should be about as imminent as possible? I do, Katie, and you've hit it exactly on the head. So when a client comes to talk to me, let's say a criminal defendant facing jail time, um, normally those conversations are privileged because I need to be able to defend that person and that person needs to be able to talk to me openly and honestly. And that's you know one of the oldest privileges in American law is that you can talk to your attorney and not have to worry that it gets out into open court. The exception, and it's a really narrow one, I've almost never seen it actually applied in practice, is when the lawyer is party to the crime in some sense. And here, as you say, it's not just the trial judge, but the Court of Appeals, our nation's second highest court, said, yeah, it looks like a crime was committed and looks like this evidence is material to it. And that's why the information's coming out uh, in this criminal investigation. That, to me, as your question indicates, says this is a, you know, a crime. It's a very high threshold. The judges have already determined it to be a crime. Now, the only question is whether it's Trump or someone else that the attorney-client privilege was pierced for. And I suspect, you know, there's one probably pretty easy answer to that question. So, Hugo, let's take a quick listen to some more of what former Trump lawyer Tim Parlatore had to say about Boris Epstein. In my opinion, he was not very honest with us or with the client on certain things. Uh, there were certain things like the searches that he had attempted to interfere with. As we put together our defense strategy uh, to help educate Merrick Garland as to how best uh, to handle this matter, he was preventing us from engaging in that strategy. Hugo, it sounds like Boris is running interference or maybe serving as a buffer between Trump's counsel and Trump himself. Can we anticipate Trump maybe using this as a defense in a special counsel prosecution, as in if Trump claims, look, I wanted to do the right thing, but Boris didn't let that happen? I think it's, it's difficult to say where this goes. You know, Parlatore resigning, uh, this was more of personal differences with Epstein than it was over disagreements with legal strategy. I mean, from what we understand and according to our sources in this, it started off, that disagreement started off over legal strategy. And you heard Palatore saying there that uh, Epstein tried to interfere with searching Bedminster um, when he was doing his second round of searches because the DOJ thought Trump was still holding on to even more classified documents even after the FBI had searched Mar-a-Lago. Um, I think Trump is going to keep all of his options available until the last moment. That's certainly been his playbook all the way through other criminal investigations and civil litigation as well. 
Um, but I think the reliance on counsel defense is always a favorite for Trump. He has deployed that elsewhere, or at least he has tried to. And it wouldn't surprise me if down the road, if things are looking really hot, he might try that. But I not sure if Parlatore's resignation was directly tied to that. That was much more a, a tough war. That was much more of like a personal issue that he had with uh, Epstein. Yeah, that's some dirty laundry being aired, though, between the Trump counsel. Neil, last to you, former Trump lawyer Ty Cobb thinks Trump's going to be jailed over all of this. Take a listen. All they really have to do is show that Trump moved these documents at various times, um, uh, when DOJ was either demanding them or actually present. I think this obstruction case is a tight case. Uh, and yes, I do think he'll go to jail on it. I mean, Neil, Ty Cobb joining former Attorney General Bill Barr in this assessment, as well as tr former Trump fixer Michael Cohen. Now Parlatore saying, peace out. I'm not going to be involved in any of this. It sounds like Trump's former lawyers know when to abandon ship. I agree. It's never, Katie, a good sign when your legal team is falling apart before charges have even been filed. But I have to say things are looking particularly bad when one of your own former attorneys is predicting you're going to go to prison, which is exactly what happened here, and as well his former attorney general, Bill Barr. Um, so I, I think that's a pretty telling sign. I do want to push back a little bit on what Hugo said, because I don't think that one of his attorneys resigning parlatore can be chalked up to personal differences. That strikes me as highly unlikely. I mean, lawyers are used to working with all sorts of different people with all sorts of different strategic judgments. You don't walk out on a case like this for something like that. So, you know, I think the really Trump loses a lot of lawyers. I mean, the only thing he loses more than elections is his legal representation. And he loses them because they're either going to jail or indicted or worried that they will or something pretty serious. And so I don't think that the explanation that's been given, and of course, Hugo's right, that's what they're kind of trotting out, personal differences and stuff is enough. And it may be that they're trying to set up this other lawyer, Epstein, to be the fall guy. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Time will tell. But, you know, so far, things are looking very, very bad for Donald Trump.